Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, do you hear me well? Hear me well. I see that somebody is here, so I just wanted to find out if I'm hearable well so that uh, I can start. I will check here quickly. Uh, somebody I see it's already waiting, but yes, okay. So great, uh, sorry for this uh, uh, actually <laughs> unplanned uh, technical issues, but uh, I think as soon as you use online platforms, uh, things may arise and uh, and I think uh, that would be the, the short message uh, for everybody who is joining. Uh, I would like to first maybe introduce myself. This is fourth uh, live session. Uh, to talk about really in an open way um, about uh, how to create uh, or co-create a brighter future for PhD students and postdocs, uh, especially in life sciences. And uh, why I care about that is because um, myself, I have very strong academic background. Uh, I started my own startup, uh, bio-inspired think tank in Leiden, in Netherlands. Um, uh, in terms to build uh, bridges between academia and industry. And these bridges are not only based on science, but these bridges are based also on all the postdocs and PhD uh, students, which their future is more and more based on recent nature uh, posts, which I was uh, presenting in my previous uh, vlogs, but also live sessions, not really certain at universities. And we have to create also human capital bridges to maintain this highly skilled PhDs um, uh, and uh, apply and, and uh, make smooth transition of, uh, of uh, this type of highly skilled uh, researchers uh, from academia to uh, industry. And that, of course, starts uh, first at startups, uh, so not yet established companies. And that's where, where I am. And that's, uh, that's why I'm also a strong advocate for PhD students and postdocs in order that my startup can also create, hopefully, brighter future uh, for them. And uh, at the last session, uh, we were already talking about uh, uh, very different uh, issues, challenges for academia, including academic structure, uh, since it, it, these programs for PhD students, but also postdocs, are not really fit for purpose. Um, they are... Um, they are really not focusing on uh, what's next and what's next in their career after finishing PhD and after postdoc and uh, how to settle uh, because we all want to settle and create safe ecosystem where we all have jobs and, and we are satisfied and we can grow also uh, in a, looking at perspective of personal development. So myself, I... Uh, I didn't do such extensive introduction during last uh, live sessions, but I realized that for collaboration, you have to also gain, and that was my safe, uh, in, in a way, self-awakening, not only agile uh, skills. And this you can more hear uh, looking at my vlogs, not live session, but vlogs where I talk about agile and what does it mean, but also how I uh, became, uh, because of collaboration, for collaboration effort and purpose, uh, uh, agile team building coach because for every collaboration you have team and and you have team which is consisting on very different individuals uh, uh pis uh, professors uh, business people so very uh, cross-functional background and you need to know how to actually uh, as an initiator as a ca catalyst also for contributing uh, to primary uh, initiation but also catalyzing this type of small consortia how you uh, you know how you can um, apply your coaching skills in in building successful partnerships in terms of small consortia between academia and industry. Uh, so uh, 
this was very important for me as a coach also to realize that you know, I want to also help individually, not only in terms of consortia um, uh, projects, but also individually. Uh, I want to help postdocs, especially because they have very short life at university within academia to, to, to very quickly find their way. And uh, I already told you, and I will keep repeating this, that based on recent uh, statistics, only 0.5% becomes professors for all PhDs. And 99.5 has to find their uh, way uh, uh, very often beyond academic walls. And, and uh, this is not easy way. Uh, I think none, none of us uh, is really prepared for that. Uh, uh, and uh, for me, this really helped uh, that I was actually very uh, social always, uh, very uh, um, very much enjoying always direct interacting and networking. So. I dive into um, business ecosystem quite smooth. Uh, related, if I if I think about direct networking and developing business opportunities and becoming a scientist entrepreneur, uh, truly in this uh, entrepreneurial um, frame. Uh, but not everybody uh, have such ability. I, I I realize that not everybody knows right away how to directly network, how to you know break this. Uh, uh, comfort zone and step out and introduce uh, themselves and talk about science in in uh, using language which, which is digestible not only for scientists of course uh, because this is the most digestible but also for business people which don't have any uh, any background any scientific background and how to bring science and how to inspire them to contribute to to the science based uh, projects uh, in business setting in business ecosystem. So uh, I think that that uh, was something which I think I didn't share during last uh, live session. And I wanted to uh, a little bit expand on it today because I will also talk uh, about a particular project or a particular article uh, regarding uh, collaborations and, and game changers. And uh, I think I would start from this article uh, and later I will summarize a little bit for some of you which um, which didn't uh, really have time to listen to all these live sessions. Um, I'm still testing times by the way, which time is the best. Um, so uh, I'm using, I, I'm actually testing different days and that's also part of entrepreneurship as experimenting with time which um, most of people maybe can join. Uh, so uh, I would first uh, maybe start from the from the article which uh, I very much I, I appreciate it and uh, this uh, article I have to check here on my activities. This article uh, was presented on LinkedIn uh, by Let me see I have to check because uh, I don't want to make mistake but I I think I will also open this article so that it will be maybe um, interesting. And I will put it on LinkedIn by Ulrich Betz from Merck, uh, uh, from Darmstadt, Germany. Uh, nice overview of game changers in science and technology now and beyond. And it was published in El by Elsie. Um, and I really, really like that Elsevier, uh, there are articles uh, which are technological forecasting and social change. And um, importantly, this article was uh, prepared, first author is Ulrich uh, Betz, uh, but it was prepared for very international um, uh, folk, uh, representing here authors. So there was... Uh, uh, 
One of the authors comes from Heliopolis University for Sustainable Development, academic institute from Germany, Bayer uh, a company from Germany, Department of Chemical Engineering Biotechnology from TU, Darmstadt, Germany. So Technical University, University of Oxford in UK, uh, also Harvard University, uh, Department of Biochemistry, Pharmacology, School of Biomedical Sciences from uh, University of Melbourne, so Australia. Uh, and I could name it all the authors, but I think uh, that could be a little bit boring, right? But uh, this is combination of authors with both companies, um, uh, life sciences companies, uh, but also academic uh, institutes. Uh, and uh, I think that's what brings uh, the best, uh, uh, the most, I think, uh, insightful, uh, but also the most uh, wide perspective, taking a perspective that authors representing both academia and industry. And um, what is important here is that uh, this, uh, this review or this article is about game changers and about um, the strongest game changers or the most influential, uh, let's say, uh, game changers, which are uh, currently um, with Ulrich, and that's why my startup was also created uh, in 2017 um, uh, to empower, to empower strong, uh, in terms of collaboration, in terms of uh, communicating science uh, to public by scientists from both industry and academia. It's very important to trigger new breakthrough ideas which often emerge at the interface of disciplines. And I think uh, I would also like to uh, recall here uh, something which uh, may uh, you may not realize very very quickly, but um, when I've been at the uh, ceremony uh, of opening academic, I believe, year at Leiden University, uh, the Rector Magnificus uh, woman, woman um, Hester Bile, uh, which is um, also engineer, uh, said something very very. I think still relevant also to this article uh, and to to creating this new breakthroughs, right? Because we all want to create new breakthroughs, uh, these interfaces, cross-disciplinary interfaces, which perfectly fit or match to agile environment where you have a cross-disciplinary team. So um, she said that uh, to biology is very complex field. And if you think about solving biological problem, uh, you need to find an answer by applying interdisciplinary approach in biology, because our body, uh, if you think very, uh, very, look very simple at, as, as, at humans or human beings, our human body is, it, it contains all different elements of biological sciences, meaning uh, there are biochemical chemical processes taking uh, taking place, uh, biomechanical processes taking uh, place. Uh, and biomechanical, uh, uh, me uh, I would not only think about how organs are working, right, physically moving, uh, but also our circulation system is, is a closed, in a way, microfluidic system uh, 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 composed of many microcapillaries. Uh, and uh, in our brain, in all our organs. And, and if we think about this particular biomedical, biophysical perspective, um, uh, biochemical also, uh, yeah, we cannot just uh, study biology uh, applying one type of biological approach. And that's why this uh, applying this interdisciplinary approach within biology. Uh, is uh, is so important. Also, looking at uh, not only uh, biophysics, uh, biochemistry, uh, but also uh, uh, if we even think about uh, all the, uh, if we look, take a look from systems biology approach, uh, we we have to also change perspective, not only war, look at micro and nano surfaces or nanostructures, right? Applying microscopy to be able to see something at cellular or subcellular level, uh, but also look uh, what happens at the macro level, right? How all these organs are 
uh, in a way, interacting with each other within this one body covered by skin, uh, which is also important element. So I, I think it's a, uh, it's a mixture of different biomaterials, uh, a lot of different organs with very different uh, microfluidics, uh, but also dynamics. Um, and of course, uh, if we look at, uh, at, much, at much lower level, also complicated machinery, uh, uh, cellular machi machinery, which is, uh, which is uh, also um, performing all uh, enzymatic reactions within our body uh, to make sure that uh, biochemically we are also tuned at, uh, at each moment. And I'm not even talking about brain because that's even more complicated. Uh, I think the, the, the ones I think I will talk more about this triad, brain, blood and bone. But uh, the point is we cannot just use one type of biological approach. We have to use different type of approaches to answer biological questions or find solution for biological challenge or problem, especially innovation. That's really important to, to look uh, at any type of biological problem uh, from interdisciplinary perspective. So wider perspective than biological. Uh, so uh, I'd like to uh, talk about this a little bit, uh, about this um, article, and a, a little bit relate to uh, how how then you know we can also imagine um, academic or human uh, talents can fit to development of this new uh, breakthroughs because with uh, every uh, interdisciplinary approach or type of innovation, of course, uh, the, there are people which are associated uh, with not only artificial intelligence and robotics, but also uh, people at many different levels, uh, managers, future managers, uh, work people from work floor, uh, scientists, project leaders, uh, policy makers, uh, uh, regulatory also um, scientists or, or experts, uh, especially if you want to introduce, uh, 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 for example, medical devices, right? You work on implants and you want to in introduce medical devices in the market. So uh, this, uh, this important uh, uh, human uh, element here is uh, still very um, very important when we plan to develop such innovation or to develop such dialogue. Um, and uh, from I will talk today about a little bit from perspective of higher hires, potential uh, development of uh, mm, manpower for uh, carrying this interdisciplinary uh, breakthroughs, breakthroughs as uh, breakthroughs, so that they become truly game changers. Uh, and uh, I will present to you today a very short overview of this article, but I think the main overview I will present uh, already in the, um, in the flock. And uh, flock will be way more focused also on developing uh, pos potential business models. But today I will, uh, during this live session, I will talk more about, um, uh, let's say, summary uh, and uh, manpower uh, to create successful uh, dialogue and successful consortia uh, and uh, how we could possibly develop also uh, business models to, to um, empower um, this uh, game changers. In perspective uh, of uh, game changer, um, uh, we also need to realize that uh, there need to be a space for bringing from academia uh, to startups um, uh, interdisciplinary thinkers. That's very different type of scientist. Uh, which thinks from very wide perspective. 
uh, which uh, can maybe even or is trained as a, for example, medical doctor and, and a PhD, so scientist, uh, medical doctor. Um, so it has already educational profile, which is very interdisciplinary. Uh, but also, if in the case of large corpora corporations, strategic planners, uh, if you imagine very big pharmas which want to join such um, such interdisciplinary projects, um, you need to think about their uh, strategy because they always have certain strategy uh, pre-planned, and uh, they are not as agile as startups. So, uh, if you would like to have such uh, top players uh, in, in this consortia, you have to realize also the, the, your dynamics, how, how this type of companies are actually um, performing uh, and what is their dynamics and how adaptable they are to uh, introducing any type of changes. Uh, so that is something which, uh, which is uh, very important. Uh, the other thing which um, I'd like to comment here based on this article is that uh, importance of having this interdisciplinary thinkers um, while, while thinking, well, we need very specialized scientists, right, to, uh, to develop quickly and have focused approach um, on this interdisciplinary breakthroughs is actually more mind of generalists of polymath and polymath is preferred and uh, of course in history we had and i was really uh, glad that all that uh, ulrich brought this into introduction um we had already such scientists right uh, or rather individuals in history uh which themselves they were game changers um meaning marie Curie, skłodowska uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Charles Darwin, Isaac Newton, Louis Pasteur, Thomas Edison, uh, Benjamin Franklin, um, and, and others, right? Uh, so we already had some already game changers uh, in history. However, looking for current game changers, uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't know if they are as impactful as this ones, which I just mentioned. But it's about mindset. Uh, that's how it starts. And that's why I, I told you many times that I'm teaching also and, and performing trainings to change mindset or to acquire mindset which is flexible, uh, which is adaptable to, uh, to obstacles because life and also innovation and also business is full of obstacles. And we live in very uncertain environment, especially if we think about now perspective of freedom and war in Ukraine. Um, and because of this very uncertain circumstances, um, maintaining a manpower or pool, as also especially in Leiden Bioscience Park, I can say that here human cap there is human capital ad agenda and there are um, regular meetings where all, all different people which are interested from all different parties, schools, uh, businesses, inc startups, including me, are meeting and discussing. We are. We want to create, as this enlightened bioscience park, that I can say for certain, um, a sustainable model uh, of human capital, where we have a pool of all uh, different, not only students, but also already gradu uh, graduated um, uh, people. Uh, which are can be experienced scientists or business uh, uh, have of, of, or, or graduated in business, so that we can really create a sustainable pool of talent within this uh, very big organization. And uh, Leiden Bioscience Park is consisting of, of, of around 215 uh, types of organizations. And of course, also affiliated with different uh, um, academic institutes here or university universities. So I think the sustainability is very important from this perspective and sustainable development. And of course, uh, what I would like to also comment 
I will also come back to it also during my vlog that uh, the sustainable development, which is a little bit missed from this type of review, is also on building sustainable business models because they're all associated within every business ecosystem, which is interdisciplinary, where science and business is um, uh, hand in hand leading innovation. Uh, we also need education, right? Education for these future scientists, which will become hopefully also scientists, entrepreneurs uh, with this type of interdisciplinary uh, mindset. But for to, to create such type of scientist entrepreneur with interdisciplinary mindset, we need to also develop successful education uh, programs already at academia, right? So it's not just when, pe when, when scientists suddenly makes transition and learns everything at, uh, uh, in the company. That's, that's, of course, also important because every company has different work culture. Um, and regulations, and maybe even manifesto or work culture and, and, and uh, safety even uh, uh, protocols. But we also have to realize that uh, we need to prepare new generations of future scientists, which are yet still studying at university, for, to be able to, pre to give them sufficient amount of time for this change. Because they, I believe younger you are, more prone you are towards changing your mindset older you are, more fixed mindset you have. So more resistant you are to change yourself, change your habits. Although there are, of course, exceptions. Um, and that's what I would like to uh, say here, particularly about future of postdocs and PhD students. So hopefully future generation of scientists, entrepreneurs with stepping into academia. Um, the game changer topics, uh, this is very, uh, I think, relevant. I think you already heard about smart living, health enablers, advanced biotechnology, um, engineering, uh, dynamic life science and alternate resources for the future regarding energy resources for the future. And I think I would just highlight few of them uh, because uh, I think that they are very relevant also to organize if you want to hire or you want to create manpower pool, you, of course, have to make sure that you have also space, right? So physical space, and you can accommodate these people within the company structures and also university. That also, it, it's important part, but especially in companies, um, before hiring, uh, uh, you need to make sure that you, there is a space for these people to work. Um, even, um, I think, corona or pandemic time, um, allowed us on enab enabled us to create online spaces right um, and work together and using clouds so but anyway smart living definitely uh, and this is not just for applying um, artificial intelligence um, electronics robotics wearables uh, and I think 3d printing but also, uh, machine uh, learning, because I think 3D printers, I think that was, was already very great uh, example. I think in Holland has been in Amsterdam, even house, which was 3D printed. So I think for, for those people which are, which are uh, 3D print uh, fans, um, uh, I think that's really great that uh, 3D printing has such broad applications as evolving sustainable technology. Uh, if we uh, think about uh, the health enablers. Uh, now, um, Uri is describing more than ever poor life uh, style choices can be managed. Sickness is encountered as part of damage control rather than proactively creating true health and preventing disease. And I have to um, um, agree here that um, for uh, the, our health now is defined Maybe this is not uh, expanded here, but it's expanded not only in physical health, but mental health. And our lifestyle is very important and keeping uh, private uh, work uh, life balance is also very important. So pre preventing disease. Mm, so uh, this is some, uh, some, I think, type of education uh, 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 or education technology which has been developed. And this is also in terms of business, a uh, very important game changer. 
Um, the other thing which, um, which is, of course, related to health enablers is robotics, or rather uh, nanorobotics, or actually using nanoparticles, uh, which are encapsulating gene uh, encoded tools as sustainable technologies. Uh, that's more at, at uh, nano level, um, which is also very fascinating uh, type of ecosystem. Uh, and uh, topics which are, which I'd like to comment here, addressing uh, also life uh, uh, or longer. Uh, or um, longevity. Um, these are also uh, at the forefront of innovation and they came as a part of biorevolution in understanding the human brain coupled with microbiome. And these things are very interesting in terms of perspective of our health, how uh, our microbiome or personal microbiome is uh, affecting our life quality and how we can now um, apply different approaches, uh, assess uh, uh, our microbiota and uh, chemical toxicity. Uh, and we live in an era of pollution, also microplastic pollution, and we should not forget that microplastic has um, true uh, impact on functioning of our body, uh, bodies and should not be forgotten also as a, as a toxifying element coming from our environment or from the food in terms of fish, which we also uh, consume. Um, and our microbiome has influence on our brain, right? On the human brain. So this is definitely this uh, microbiome and human brain. So more than just uh, brain, blood and bone triad, but I would uh, say now that we have no, not triad anymore. We have brain, we have bone, blood, and microbiome. And I think this, is, uh, this becomes another uh, essential element uh, of developing uh, different innovations uh, and having impact. Uh, what I was a little bit missing from this general thoughts on sustain sustainability and development of this sustainable development of manpower to meet demand on interdisciplinary and of innovation, I was missing a little bit how this connects to you know to developing and maintaining uh, sustaining development of future innovators or scientist entrepreneurs. Um, this is uh, this this is only taken from very scientific perspective, from uh, a technological edge, but not from human, which is important part of this. Uh, of the innovation or creating innovation. Uh, so um, that's what I was really missing uh, here. Uh, definitely uh, what I like a lot uh, is um, the next chapter, chapter about pandemic preparedness and how much we are prepared now as a um, as a future generation, especially for future generation, how we are prepared for next pandemic, because that affects innovation, that affects our health, all sectors of our living. And I think this is something which it's true, we cannot avoid, but there is very a lot of controversies about pandemic, especially the recent one, the, the Corona uh, COVID-19 pandemic, because this Controversy comes that how well we are trained as a scientist, especially virologists, to work safe so that app cannot leak. And what type of research, so I think this is ethical question, what type of research are, is performed in China? And I think this is, still has to be a big debate on it uh, after clearing out corona cases. And somebody has to take responsibility for it, not only scientific, but also responsibility, uh, which uh, is social responsibility, right? And global responsibility for uh, basically um, allowing, performing uh, engineering work 
on viruses which can be potential biological weapon against or targeted for humans. Uh, and uh, China uh, is, is uh, a country where indeed uh, Wuhan, especially Wuhan Institute, because I don't want to talk about whole China, it's whole Chinese science, but Wuhan Institute is under big question mark regarding all these issues. Um, if we uh, have standardized guidelines in viro virological research or engineering viruses and safety uh, against uh, or... Um, guidelines related to engineering uh, viruses as a bio biological weapons against targeted against humans, especially uh, we should avoid, of course, uh, doing such research. But if we have such labs, bioweapon labs um, against humans, well, then we are humans responsible for what has been happening, not animals and not just a stochastic at some point, appearance of virus which can affect human life quality. So in terms of working on game changers, yes, I think the game changer uh, here was pandemic. Um, uh, pandemic uh, event which happened lately, uh, but... Um, we should not be um, just, um, we can of course use it as a model to build preventive um, models um, for all our uh, nations. As a scientist, I think particularly we are here very responsible, but also companies which are producing vaccines. Um, but we have to realize that we are never prepared because uh, this is, I strongly believe, caused by human error and not, uh, uh, and not stochastic event. And the other thing which I'd like to relate here about cook, so that also, you know, if we take a measures and avoid such human uh, mirror, uh, such uh, human mistakes. We can be better prepared to uh, to such type of pandemics. Um, the other thing which uh, I wanted to talk about in this uh, session is. Uh, we also have to realize uh, it's not just about pandemic, uh, but it's about uh, you know how the infrastructure of our ecosystems is prepared to scale up, because that's the biggest problem: scale up innovation, and that comes with uh, manpower, but it also comes with facilities, and uh, also uh, what. Uh, what I uh, realized, uh, infrastructures in terms of building substructures, which are fitting for purpose, um, innovation discoveries or discoveries. And um, for today, I think I'd like to, because it's already 15, one minute, I'd like to particularly focus on uh, universities transformation uh, I was already uh, talking about this for a very long time. Since 2017, I already have seen or was actually had a vision that something has to change within university. Following four postdocs at three different, at, sorry, at, in three different countries and very different universities made me believe that something is not working in this system. And Nowadays, there is a huge commotion because of not just insufficient mentorship, but also work culture. I hope I can show it better. Work culture, which is toxic, hostile. There is also a leadership problem. Uh, and... Uh, of course, the, this is 
this is all important. And what uh, the, the fourth uh, problem arised, uh, which is also a problem of universities, is its salaries. Uh, salaries at universities, um, I would say, raised very minimal. Um, when I did my first postdoc, I think in Nijmegen at K uh, at at Radboud, and I looked at my salary sleep. Um, maybe now postdocs get, um, and that was two thousand. Uh, let me see, two thousand six. Maybe they have like five or six percent more they getting now. Um, so imagine at the time this has this this was almost uh, 14, 17 years ago, and the race was so little. And I'm not just talking about Netherlands, but also other countries. Uh, the CEOs, uh, these are the salary established scales depending on the researcher stuff, um, which are really, really low. And I think if we compare now uh, the, how much this race uh, actually um, increased or was, uh, this is quite uh, worrying. And that's why I think you see uh, now uh, PhD students, postdocs, and professors uh, even uh, publicly going uh, on the street and uh, protesting that we carry the, actually, or we have the highest degrees, but we earn mi almost minimal uh, compared to other sectors. So um, this is, I think, very, uh, very much worrying. And I know it from my example when my uh, father-in-law um, uh, which was more in uh, engineering, asked me how much I earn as a, a fresh uh, PhD. Uh, and I said, well, I'm earning around 2,200. Uh, he could not believe it, uh, that uh, salaries in Netherlands are so low. While uh, if you look at the other jobs, other professions you have, if you work in, uh, in industry or you work uh, in... Um, even uh, if I can look at Holland in uh, constru construction, you you earn easily five thousand uh, netto, so uh, twice more than PhD. So I think this is uh, not comparable. It's actually uh, still very. Um, uh, I think some big space for improvement. Uh, for universities if they want to maintain their talent. Otherwise, I would say uh, a lot of professors uh, will pass to industry, take leading positions or CTO, C-level positions and um, academia, academic uh, ac uh, universities with such poor academic structures and uh, salaries uh, will have to undergo tremendous um, transformation uh, in order to exist. Or maybe there will be time for private universities and uh, not anymore. Uh, uh, governmental type of institutions or academic uh, uh, institutions. So I think um, that's what I'd like to tell you today during this um, vlog. Um, as you see, I touch upon a little bit Game Changers uh, articles, uh, which I also will present in my vlog. Uh, but I wanted to give you some warm, uh, warm up. Uh, so if you can already, you know, understand uh, what is what is happening in industry, what are the Game Changers? Uh, how, how important Game ch Changers uh, are for sustainable development of human talent, especially PhDs and postdocs, and what they need to develop. I talked about this interdisciplinary way of mindset to become successful scientists, entrepreneurs, and, um, and, work, uh, and work effectively in 
type of collaborative setting in business and how important this this not only building collaborations between industry and academia to drive innovation is important, but also how important it is to train academic scientists uh, and which can actively participate in this interdisciplinary dialogue. Uh, and not forgetting, of course, public. I think public has been always um, put uh, on the side only for crowdfunding projects, uh, public have, have been engaged. And I think the role of public is tremendous uh, and it's maybe underestimated for the moment. So I think we as a scientist entrepreneurs, but also industry or collaboration, collaboration uh, which are established between academia and, and industry have to also together not separately, but together we have to strongly communicate this type of academic industrial science and innovation impact to public. And I think that's something which also uh, crossed my, my mind here in terms of communicating science to uh, public. So uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this uh, session. Uh, I hope this opened a little bit your mindset uh, too. Uh, how how we how this kind of changes and collaborative effort is 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 envisioned. Um, and uh, uh, as a, I would like to again uh, thank uh, uh, Ulrich Betz for uh, bringing so many parties and. Uh, uh, writing this very, very important uh, article. Um, so that is also uh, hopefully for you guys a uh, very great uh, piece of study in a way on collaboration uh, between uh, industry and academia. And uh, yes, um, I promised you that mm, I will also talk about uh, different types of PhDs in different countries. So to give you uh, an open your sort of horizon on uh, how to how a PhD or PhD studies look, uh, are performed in different countries um, and which of the programs maybe are even more uh, attractive than in the other countries. Um, and I think that also can uh, stimulate you to make right choices in in in, in uh, planning your education, not just career or post-education career, but also uh, your education path. So uh, this is something which, uh, which I will continue for the next session already uh, in, the, in the next week. Uh, so uh, this will be, today we have Thursday, so uh, I will continue next week, uh, maybe at three o'clock this time. So uh, again, to uh, a little bit give different uh, time options and see uh, which uh, which time option actually works uh, or is the most uh, suitable for all of you. So uh, that's for now. Uh, and uh, thanks uh, for listening. But also, if you have any questions, please uh, put it in the chat. So I'm happy to uh, answer it. And the link to this article I will give you in a moment in the, uh, in the comments. Take care and see you next week. Bye.